Want to learn how to get the perfect rusty patina on aluminum and turn this into this? Well, stay tuned and I'll be right back and I'll show you how I do that. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. My name is Elise, welcome to my attic. On my channel, I'm going to bring you a lot of bargain tips and tricks for crafting on a budget, trash to treasure makeovers, and special thrift store, garage sale, and estate sale hauls. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, please like this video below and consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so let's get started. All right, these shiny tins from Amazon look great, but you may want them to have a more rustic feel to them, which is what I wanted. So the first step is going to be to spray them with a gray spray primer or gray spray paint. That's going to stick to this metal. If you go straight in with acrylic paint, it's not going to stick. It's just going to scrape or chip right off. So I'm going to go ahead and spray these and be right back. All right, I got one of these sprayed and you can see even now that it's dried you can see a little bit of the silver still showing through but that's fine if this were really um, aging naturally it's not all going to be solid gray you're going to have places where it's still going to be shiny so that's perfectly fine so that's the first step second step is going to be to paint it with the rust now to do this you're going to need several paint colors all right we want a white paint we want black paint we're going to mix these together get a nice gray or if you already have a nice dark gray go ahead and use that um, i like to mix it because um, i like to come back with a little bit of white sometimes to highlight it just a little bit okay and then we have a nice dark brown a nice rusty color and then a little bit lighter color this is folk art oh terracotta that's what it's called this one is burnt umber and this one is called georgia clay i don't know if you can see that and then this one they call no i guess it's just black oh no licorice thought so thought it had a name on it licorice okay and then this is just a jar of white that i mixed up uh, a while back so it's basically just white. It's got a little bit of an off-white color to it, so it's not a stark white. Okay, so first color we're gonna work with is the dark gray, and you need very little paint for this, uh, especially if you're just doing these one at a time. Now, if you're going to, um, oh my goodness, this is getting dried up. I should have brought a different bottle out here. Okay, well, it's still usable. All right, you just don't need a whole lot. Now, if you're gonna be doing all of these, because you're uh, going to work on 20 of them, then you're going to mix up a little bit more. But for me to show you, I'm just putting a little tiny bit on the plate. Okay. And then we're going to pour out just a little bit of this white. And you just, you see, you just don't need a whole lot. All right. And then we're going to mix it up. So we've got at least a couple of It's just a little darker, you know, a couple shades darker than this. All right. Now, oh, I forgot to tell you about this. This is a spray bottle. This is uh, the kind that um, uh, hairdressers use. It's got a fine mist. For this, it doesn't matter. You can use just about anything. But I'm going to go ahead and just spray that on here to get a little bit of water in this. Okay. And water it down just a little bit. And again, this doesn't have to mix up to an even color because when things age, that coloring isn't even. All right. So now we're going to go down to the inside and paint, paint the inside pretty solidly in this color. Come up to the edges and just kind of rough, roughly paint it. All right. And here's where it starts to get magical. You're going to spray your spray bottle on this. And see how it all drips down to the inside? That's how you get that natural look to it. Now, I might have sprayed this just a little too much. Now, let's pour a little bit of that out. Redo it just a little. I think I overdid it just a little. Okay. 
All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on the outside. We're just going to paint it. And this is a very forgiving technique. So if you don't like the way it turned out, just spray it again, paint it again. Um, remember, we're mimicking nature and we're trying to mimic how things look when they start to get old. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get the blow dryer, dry this a little bit so that we can move on to the next step. I'll be right back. Okay, so that color is done. And you can see, especially right in here, how it kind of drips down. And that's exactly the kind of look we want. The reason you get uh, patina on things like that is usually because of moisture. Um, or in this case, you, you've got a tart tin. It would be oils from the kitchen and things like that. They're going to run and they're going to react with um, the air, the oxygen, and the metal. And they're going to change colors. And so you're kind of mimicking that. So that's exactly what you want. So now it already has a much nicer... Uh, aged look to it, but now we want to add a little bit of rust to the middle. So the next step is to mix up our rust colors. And we're going to start with a little bit of brown. We don't need a lot because really this is just to darken up the, uh, the rust color. So we've got a little bit of our burnt umber and a little bit of our this orange color called Georgia Clay. Okay, And then we aren't going to mix this together, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on the plate. Okay. All right, you come on, cooperate. All right. And again, it's not critical that your colors don't mix. So I'm not even going to bother to clean out the brush because it, it doesn't matter. Um, again, we're, we're mimicking what would be natural and these colors and are going to mix a little bit. Okay, so I just want to tone down this rust color a little and give it a little bit of variety. So we're blending it together a little bit. And then I'm going to dab it into the middle. I'm going to go ahead and run it across the bottom so that the bottom is all coated with it. And then dab it up to the edges. And it is a little dark. So then I'm going to tap in here and get a little bit of the brighter color. Okay, just a little too, too, little too dark there. Okay, and you can see it's really hard to mess up. You're just dabbing it on there. Okay, and then once again, we're going to spray it lightly with the water. And now you see how it starts to blend together. Okay, and then again, we're going to kind of let it roll around until it fills up all the little fluted areas, okay? Now this technique can be used on a lot of things. Um, you can even use it on wood. If you are gonna do that, you wouldn't need to start with the spray paint because it's gonna stick just fine to the wood. In this case, uh, we wanted something that was definitely gonna stick well to the aluminum, okay? All right, so now we've got this flowing nicely around the bottom. And I, yeah, well, we're gonna come back and do that on another layer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead once again and dry this with the blow dryer. And I'll be right back and show you what's next. We're gonna do one more layer of paint. Oh, that's right, I still need to do the bottom too. And then we're gonna do one more layer of paint, a little bit of the brighter color, and then we're gonna be done there, okay? And then I did the back too. Uh, it's not quite the way I wanted it. It looks a little too painted on, so I did wipe it off a little bit, and then I'm going to go back over it. But it, you can see how forgiving it is. It's still going to work. Um, I just need to rework it a little. So anytime you don't like it, you can just wipe it off. Okay, so for the last layer, we're going to go in with these brighter colors. We're going to mix these two colors a little bit. All right. Maybe just a teeny bit of brown to tone it down a little. Okay. And then we're just going to go right into the corners. And this is where we're just going to just going to dab it in there a little. I'm not going to get quite as much. Okay. And we're going to bring it up just a little. So it kind of looks like it's just rusted a little bit all over. All right. 
And now this one, we're not going to spray it with the water. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go in with a little bit of paper towel and we're just going to kind of dab it to take down the places where it kind of looks like it's been painted. Okay, so it doesn't really look like it's been dabbed on. It looks a little bit more natural. Okay, now let me get the bottom. Same way. Now this one. Okay, do the same thing to the bottom. Getting a little bit of the creases a little here and there. You don't have to be real even because, you know, remember, rust doesn't grow evenly. And then we're just going to dab it. And I've got a few places that it dried a little too fast. And there we are. Okay. And now you have an inside that really looks like rusty metal. Okay. Looks fantastic. And that's the, that's the technique. So anything that you can paint, keep in mind that if you want it to look like old rusty metal, it's as easy as, well, you could even use three kinds of paint, three colors of paint if you have gray and you don't have to have white and black. But that's all there is to it. So I, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you'll find a use for this in uh, other crafting projects. But keep in mind this is part of the next project I'm doing which is Tart Tin Diorama Ornaments for Christmas. So if you uh, enjoyed this uh, stay tuned for the other one. I will have that one posted in a couple of days. And if you enjoyed this video, you think you're going to find it useful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks very much.